Coming up, we're going to look at the list of soft skills that play the most prominent role in leading organizations and organizational change. That and more in just a few seconds. Welcome to Serious Soft Skills, where we help you unleash the power of soft skills. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tobin Porterfield and Bob Graham. Take it away, guys. Welcome to Episode 8 of Serious Soft Skills. I'm Bob Graham, and with me, as always, is Dr. Tobin Porterfield. We each teach college, not this month, but soon. We'll be back at it. We're getting close. We collaborate on researching soft skills. Boy, do we. And we both have used and seen others use soft skills in various jobs over the course of our long and illustrious careers. Not that long and that, not that illustrious, right, Toby? <laughs> we Correct. Think, there you go. We think our experience and expertise give us a unique lens for looking at soft skills, and that's what we're going to do. So let's get to it, Toby. Uh, We talk about organizations, big and small, needing a a leader, someone who can chart the course for how the company is going to evolve. Without leadership, there's no captain to this ship. And that's the analogy I like to use, that you've got to have a captain. Even if it's a one-person company, there's got to be a captain. And we both know examples of businesses that are rudderless, that no one's steering, that they're just sort of going in the wind. And so we're going to talk about the soft skills that I think the best way to describe it in my mind is how to make captaining of a ship, that business, that organization possible. But first, Toby, before we get into that, can you sort of frame where we are? Because we've been going over this over the last three or four weeks, and I thought you could sort of set it up for us if you would. Right, Bob. We, in our research, identified over 50 unique skills that make up what what we consider to be that soft skill set. And that number is certainly an overwhelming group. And and where do you even start? So uh, we took the approach of, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? We broke that 50 plus into four groups. And what will be challenging for us is that we formulated those groups based on where those soft skills are applied in the organization. So we first started with individual skills, the items of uh, loyalty, time management, uh, the things that the person kind of internalizes and brings with them. And then we moved on to nexus, which are those skills that you use in one-on-one interactions with with another person. Then we expanded out to group, which obviously those those uh, special skills we'll need to uh, operate in an environment with several people. And then we, here we are with these top group, which we called enterprise skills, because they really separate themselves. And, and what's uh, additionally challenging about these is that they also apply at other levels. But what makes them distinct and the reason we pulled them into the uh, enter- enterprise level was that they can be very clearly applied in a strategic way. So let me just give give you an example, um, per, being persuasive. Now, certainly, at all levels of communication, we want to uh, persuade people to our thinking. We want to be able to communicate our ideas. Uh, so we want to have that influence factor. But that's so much more critical to that leadership level or or in a broader sense when we're influencing the direction of the organization. So you mentioned earlier about leader, developing those leaders, but there is that that ultimate leader of the organization, but also there are times when that leader is going to pull together key members of the organization or a virtual organization to set policy, to set strategy. And all those people are going to be bringing these type of skills to the table. And leader, we're using the term leadership pretty broadly here, right, Toby? So a leader could be someone who's in charge of three or four colleagues for a project or a three-month assignment. It could be a formal VP or sales manager or a charge nurse. And it could be as high as the CEO or... Uh, some other executive level position, correct? Right. And so when we look at leadership, we're looking at someone who has responsibility for seeing that others are moving in the direction that's going to support the goals of the organization. Okay. I like I like that definition. That clarified it for me. And just for people who are listening to us the first time, Toby was talking about individual soft skills, which was our episode five, if you want to go back to that one and listen. 
And then he talked about Nexus or one-on-one soft skills. That's episode six. And then you're going to guess probably correctly that the group soft skills he talked about would be episode seven. So if you want to go back and listen to any of those and sort of catch up, you are welcome to. And then if you really want to go back all the way back to the very beginning, our first episode, which oddly enough is our most popular, really talked about what soft skills were in the first place. And we're not doing a lot of that review. So I think it's good to just put that out there for our newcomers. So when we talk about these soft skills, Toby, can you sort of give us the list of what we're describing as those enterprise soft skills so we can start to chew on them a little more, uh, a little more, I lost my metaphor, so we can chew on them. Excellent. So we only have eight in this set, which is a more manageable group, but the application of them and the develop of the development of them is much more challenging. So let me just go through the eight, and then we need to talk about that uh, that gap issue that we mentioned before. So number one is the ability to be persuasive, to identify, analyze, and solve problems, uh, can manage projects, st- strategic type focus, manages relationships, uses conflict management skills, uses critical thinking skills, leads change and manages people and human resources. <clears throat> and, and so I want to cast all those in a very strategic direction of the organization. And then also that, that gap that I mentioned a moment ago, these aren't, this doesn't allow the leader to move into place with these, but not have listening skills and not have time management skills. So we've, we've, positioned our other groups to say, well, they, they, they complement each other. They somewhat build on each other. And if you get into a level of leadership and don't have those skills of listening, empathy, communication, it makes it very difficult to be persuasive, to manage change, to draw people in, to, to really analyze a problem. You need to look at it from different perspectives and that ability to, to communicate and, and, and develop that rapport with a group are skills that we've mentioned in other sections that, that are critical to successfully developing these as well. And to me, it sounds like uh, this eight, when you put them together, is really about developing and promoting and being consistent to a shared vision of what an organization is is going to look like. It's not the tactical day-to-day stuff anymore. It's the big picture. It's seeing the forest through the trees. Uh, Often employees are looking at their various trees. I've got to do this project today and this project tomorrow. The leader is taking these eight skills and looking at the big picture. Where are we going to be in three months, three weeks, three years? What could happen industry-wide? What could happen politically, socially? All those big picture things that you can't really grab hold of unless you have a lot of good things going on in the skills that we've talked about in prior episodes and use them to sort of manifest into these eight. Does that is that sort of another way to say it? That is right where we are. And and to to look at different levels of these, whereas a, a person leading a team may want to, you know, carefully select skills and uh, abilities at a very tactical level. Uh, At this, when we talk about manages people and human resources at an enterprise level, we're really looking at what kind of corporate culture do we have? How do people work together? Um, Who are those integrators? How do we work with our outside firms and and leverage their resources? So it's a much more, as you said, strategic and uh, uh, holistic look at the organization. Toby, I'm wondering if you could take this to a really simple example that strikes me, and I'm catching you off guard, but I think you'll pull it off, which is the classroom. We both teach in classrooms. Can you apply these enterprise skills in a classroom setting? Because we've all been in classrooms, and some of us may have worked in big organizations, some worked in small, but we've all been in a classroom, and it strikes me that if you could walk us through how these show up in a classroom, it would crystallize for us. That's a that's a good way. At least we all have common ground in that. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> when it comes to a classroom environment, you and I know that that when we conduct a course, you know, that course runs over some several weeks of time. There are nor- normally some very important learning objectives that we have. We want students to 
understand business statistics, uh, the tools of it, and then be able to apply those to business situations, to run the analyses, to interpret them. So in the background, there's these learning objectives. And for a company or an organization, I think we would see those as being really the strategic goals of the organization. Mm -hmm. That's what's trying to be accomplished. And the people experiencing the class or the organization may only see the tactical of, oh, we've negotiated this contract, we've developed this new product, we've done this, and they see the mechanics. The leader has a very close eye on those strategic objectives and orchestrating and, and moving that group to it. And for us as instructors in the classroom, that means being persuasive, being convincing of the importance of the topic. It means conflict management of being able to draw people into different perspectives and, and really getting to a point of maybe disagreeing with you or with their peers to have that opportunity to sort through and, and use critical thinking and, and understand different perspectives to, to crystallize an understanding. So um, I, I like using that term orchestrate because I think that's what the leader's doing. They have a bigger picture than the others do. And whether that's a team leader or a department leader or a, a division manager or the CEO, each one of them has that set of strategic goals going on and they're orchestrating, bringing those members into concert to get that done. So uh, that's why we see these conflict management, critical thinking. So drawing people into those engagements. So in the classroom, if I'm a student, I'm looking for the A and I'm looking for the three credits and I'm looking to move towards graduation. Your job as my teacher is to get me to realize that or to cajole me into learning the things I need to learn so that the grade goes away over time. You know, no one's going to take it away, but no one's ever asked me at any job interview, tell me your grade in business analytics. They've, they've asked, you know, what did you learn? What are the skill sets? Those types of things. So I, I think that's a great analogy just to work it through because an individual student in a classroom is focused on very specific things. They are not thinking about those learning objectives, that big picture, the fact that you chose a textbook that complements other textbooks, that gives a broad perspective. And I know it resonates with me right now because it's August and I'm putting together my fall courses. So I'm doing that vision creation part in my world right now, knowing full well that my students are never going to say to me, hey, why are we doing the sequence of the textbooks in this order? Why is the guest speaker coming this week, not that week? Why did you assign us that outside reading this week? What they're looking at is, what do I need to ta learn to get the A on the test so that I can get a high grade so I can get my three credits? Right. And in a work situation, you know, we similar to the grade, we could be fixated on the salary, the, uh, the, the the remuneration of the bonuses or anything like that. And if we looked bigger picture, we might say, well, what's your job satisfaction? How how much did you enjoy your career? Because when you get to retirement, is it is it just that sum of what you earned each year or is it what you accomplished, the contribution, the skills you learned, the impact you had? And you're right. That's the same tension we deal with in the classroom is we want you to, to pass the course. We want you to graduate, but we want you to accomplish these other things that we have running in the background, the skills and the knowledge you're going to need to be successful. So, yeah, it's not unlike a company where we've got this duel and that leader understands the dichotomy of those two and, and blending them together. Yes, which sort of leads us to next week's episode where we talk about empathy, which is really a key. That's episode nine, so you want to be ready for that, where we sort of talk about one of the skills that's going to help you be more aware of how people are reacting to you, I guess, in that, in that enterprise area. So, Toby, it strikes me that we probably, without even trying, put a really nice bow on that. Do you think we're at a good place to stop now? Yeah, let me just close close this, kind of wrap this up with when we looked at leadership then, those skills that really are influencing the organization. Uh, we looked at a uh, person's ability to persuade. So there's a lot underneath of that of, of how do you persuade a group? And, and if, the, if there's no followership, there's no leadership, I think we've heard before. Um, and that's that, persuade, not order them to do things. That's developing a shared set of objectives and we're going to work as a team to reach this goal. That's not, 
hey, you clean the carpet and you clean the walls, and I'm going to sit here and marshal you guys through, correct? Correct, because we, as our perspective is more long-term. Short-term, you can drive into submission, but in the long-term, the, the organizations that are more effective persuade and, and get that group loyalty going. Uh, remember identifying and solving problems, uh, managing projects, or a project management perspective, which we'll talk about more in another uh, episode. And that's managing more than one project, correct? That's right. that's and being able to manage the, the list of projects and make sure that the right resources are applied to each one, correct? Right. And, and what we really call a portfolio of projects where those group of projects are really an investment as an organization. And we want to see that as a leader, that investment in projects taking us to the best cumulative effect. Uh, managing relationships, right alongside of conflict management, critical thinking, uh, obviously change management, which will get us back to that empathy issue, and managing people and human resources. So it's still a, uh, a difficult list, but fairly focused at eight. It is certainly high level. I will give you that. Well, thank you, Toby. Uh, we're going to wrap up. But before we do that, I'm going to share something with you that I haven't told you. I want you to guess a country that we have people who have listened to our podcast from besides the U.S. <clears throat> I'm going to go with a real oddball because I think I got you on this one. Kazakhstan. I'm so sorry. They have not registered yet. But let me give you the list of countries that have. We've had people from Japan, South Africa, Canada, India, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, and the Netherlands. So we are truly international, Toby. We, we are big time. And just uh, for people who are new to us or people trying to figure out the easiest way to access us, we, uh, we are available now on iTunes and Google Play. Worked hard to get that set up so you can download the podcast from there and make it automatic. And, of course, if you like what you hear, please, please review us. We would love your feedback. You can go to iTunes and do a review. You can go to Google Play and do a review. Uh, reviews are what help people decide what they're going to listen to, and we hope you like what you're listening to, and we hope that you can help people understand what they can expect from us so that more people join our band of people interested and aware of soft skills and how they play out. So that would be a big help to us. So now I teased you a little bit about next week, Toby, but let me just go back and say that next week we're going to talk about empathy. I think you could uh, easily say it's a soft skill that everyone can benefit from, but it's poorly understood, often overlooked. So we're going to help people see its value and how to develop it in our next episode. So we hope, hope you'll join us next Wednesday when that episode comes out. Until then, thank you for listening. Good day. And Toby, you get to say it today. Good soft skills. You've been listening to Serious Soft Skills with your hosts, Dr. Tobin Porterfield and Bob Graham. If you like what you hear, then take a moment to review us on iTunes. Looking for more insights on soft skills? Then check out our website, SeriousSoftSkills.com, for blog posts, newsletters, and other resources. And look for a new episode of Serious Soft Skills every Wednesday.